Good evening, everyone. We are back with another case on Fitz Hug Curtis syndrome. This is the twelfth case of the gynecology series. Our patient is a twenty-nine-year-old female. She had complaints of pelvic pain and painful sexual intercourse for two years. Her pregnancy status: she has been pregnant once at the age of nineteen years, but this ended in a spontaneous, complete miscarriage. She had an episode of cystitis a few years ago, which responded to antibiotics. And there is no other medical history of note, and she takes no regular medications. A brief about the patient: she has been facing these complaints since two years, and she was worried that she may have an ovarian cyst or other gynecological problem. And this pain occurs at any time of the menstrual cycle, but it was worsens during menstruation. and it also worsens when she passes urine or opens her bowels and she has been with her current sexual partner for 6 months and the pain occurs nearly every time she has intercourse and she has never been diagnosed with any sexually transmitted infections objective data on examination the abdomen is not distended and there is no organomegaly no masses are palpable but there is supra pubic tenderness which involves the lower abdomen where the genitalia is mostly present speculum examination shows a normal smooth gray or white colored discharge and swabs were taken the uterus is antiverted but has limited mobility and is tender on movement there are no adnexal masses but the adnexae are tender adnexia is the common term used for the ovaries and fallopian tubes in a female so if there was any adnexal mass present it may have been a case of a polyp which might have caused the pelvic pain but no masses were found but the adnexia was tender specialized diagnostic tests performed was urine analysis which protein blood and leukocytes were all negative there was no chlamydial infection in the patient and on transvaginal ultrasound the uterus is normal sized and axial and the endometrium measures 12 mm both ovaries are of normal morphology but appear adherent to the posterior uterus and show limited mobility and there is no free fluid in the pouch of douglas these are the laparoscopic findings where we can see violin like strings present assessment the diagnosis the laparoscopy image shows pelvic adhesions suggestive of previous infection the violin string perihepatic adhesions are classical of fitz hug curtis syndrome generally seen with previous chlamydial infection though also described with gonorrhea these findings can develop in the absence of a clinically recognized infective episode these are the violin string perihepatic adhesions that was mentioned and this is mainly used to finalize the diagnosis of this syndrome signs and symptoms acute onset of right upper quadrant abdominal pain aggravated by breathing coughing or laughing which may be referred to the right shoulder about this disease fitz hug curtis syndrome or perihepatitis is a chronic manifestation of pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic inflammatory disease is a common term used for any infection that occurs in the upper genitalia of the female which involves uterus ovaries and fallopian tubes it is described as an inflammation of the liver capsule without the involvement of the liver parenchyma with adhesion formation accompanied by right upper quadrant pain so in this syndrome if we perform liver function tests it would be most probably normal as it does not involve the liver parenchyma and it it is the inflammation of only the liver capsule and only adhesions are seen which are mostly asymptomatic a final diagnosis can be made through laparoscopy or laparotomy via direct visualization of violin string like adhesions or through hepatic capsular biopsy and culture fitz hug curtis syndrome is a complication of pelvic inflammatory disease microorganisms associated with pid are thought to spread through one of three ways 
The first is spontaneous ascending infection whereby microbes from the cervix or vagina travel to the endometrium through the fallopian tubes and into the peritoneal cavity. Complications include endometritis, salpingitis, tubo ovarian abscess, pelvic peritonitis, and FHCS. Peritonitis is commonly seen in, this, in these cases. Lymphatic spread such as infection of the parametrium from an intrauterine device and hematogenous spread such as with tuberculosis. Management and intervention. The pain may be helped with laparoscopic adhesiolysis. So this involves cutting the strings or the adhesions that were seen in the laparoscopical procedure. The perihepatic adhesions could be ignored as they are not causing symptoms. If it is causing symptoms, then it would be very necessary to perform adhesiolysis. Otherwise, pain management options are analgesics. For analgesics, we can use NSAIDs or opioid analgesics or possible uterosacral nerve ablation. Even though there is no evidence of current active infection, the tests have limited sensitivity, so it is worthwhile treating the woman and her partner with a course of antibiotics for pelvic inflammatory disease. As this syndrome is mostly associated with other infections, it is advisable to perform a culture sensitivity test using either vaginal fluid or by performing paracentesis and drawing out some fluid from the abdominal region. And proper antibiotics should be prescribed according to the organisms found in the culture. With this, we will end today's session. Thank you for watching and please share this video. Thank you.